Sunday, 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 December 3rd, The Cutting Room, New York City. I'm filming my first special, 7 and 9.30, two shows. Come on out, ianfidance.com for tickets. I'll see you there. Telling jokes and having smokes, riding bikes all through the night. It's a wild ride when you're being Ian. Coffee ice, no matter what. Now you know he likes it in the butt. It's a wild ride when you're being Ian, being Ian. And life is shit, but you're positive. Let's find out what it's like to live a life being Ian, being Ian with Jordan. Welcome to another episode of Being Ian with Jordan. I am so excited to be here. Ian, speaking of buying, buy tickets to see my special taping Sunday, December 3rd. At the Cutting Room. The Cutting Room. Ianfinance.com for tickets to shows, 7 and 9.30. I'll see you there. Oops, oops. It's pretty fun that it's being Ian with Jordan. Yes. Is There's that just, fun? Yeah, Is that it's fun? A, it's something funny. <laughs> you don't like it? I love it. Why wouldn't I like it? It's just funny because... <laughs> do you think it should be an Ian and Jordan? I, I, um, I, I think it's great. I like that it's being Ian because sometimes I have dissociative episodes where I can't say anything because I'm so depressed. And then it really becomes the Ian show. Ian also has a difficult time not chiming in to every other word that is said. So it really is being Ian with, with, with Jordan sometimes. But even Look so. Look at what this retard did. He goes, show would he goes be I nothing got you a gift. He goes, I got you. <laughs> he goes, I got you a lady in a tramp pair. Isn't that nice? That's two ladies. <laughs> I didn't know. Guess how much you paid for this? $24 for both of them. No, Twelve for the pair. Piece. Twelve a lady. Twelve? Twelve a lady. This is a dollar in a dollar store. Twelve years a lady. No, it's from Japan. It's nice. Think it, I think it's it would be B and Ian an emotional hoarding with Jordan. Whoa. Wow. Close the Shafar on that one. This is how we start the show. Yeah, I only I am know. now better than the Hasidics at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I only know what that is because one of my friends is very Jewish, although he's adopted, so he's not actually Jewish. Mm. And I did a Jewish comedy festival, the Chosen Comedy Festival. I heard about that. In Brooklyn. And then I, um, because I'm a maybe Jew, yes. so we thought that was very funny. I have material on it, although I haven't done it because it's... I really do hate the that in the current climate, climate of comedy, I really like I had a conversation with Kate and she's like, You should not be talking about white women being terrible, although I'm not listening to that. And she goes, You really shouldn't be saying anything Jew and it's like it is in your mind, you're like, Fuck that man, free speech. But then logic is just like, Yeah, do I need to do that? Cause I do have other jokes. Yeah. But we went and we did the festival. It was great. He played one of those as sort of a rim shot with my jokes. I told like That's old kind great. of the I told these I told a bit about being a maybe Jew, and it was so fun. And he taught me how to play that. And he had the big one that goes, yeah. And then he had a mini one also. I don't know what that's called. And do you know maker? a party machine? Yeah, yeah, but it's a Jewish version. <laughs> Jewish. Party. So it'd be called oh, not a noisemaker, an annoying maker. Yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> noisemaker. And then maker. I was gonna do the Jewish festival. Look at you killing the Jewish in shirt, Miami. Dude. And then the guy organizing it, um, he a self professed, you know, Jew did the thing that some Jewish people do, which is he chanced me out of the money and oh, used no! my name with oh. the and there's another group of club owners that are very Jewish, and they do that too. I go, you guys should get some better food. Like all your food is like Cisco. And you're like, well, you're Jewish, yeah. You know? So we got to get cheap food. It's all about. The I'm like, I don't think you should be saying that. on that. Yeah, is that weird? That'd be like a black guy be like, well, of course I'm late. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, yeah. what do you mean? Why would you? Oh, so you've I, never hung out with my friends from Philly? Yeah, right, exactly. That comes up a lot. Right, right. I just saw the uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I really want to see and, that. Um, Will you see it again? In the, it's four hours. And I read the book. 
And in the movie, like three times, somebody's like, yeah, they're really trying to Jew these Indians out of their money, really trying. And it was like a lot. And I left and uh, my feature was like, did you notice? And we were both like the Jew thing because we both read the book. It's nowhere in the book. It's just Scorsese being like. Oh, wow. It's not in the book? It's not in the book. What? It's like really weird. What liberties you're taking with that? And then if you think about his other movies, like when he's being like, you know, you Jew fuck. There's so many movies where he says that. But at the same time, it's like. He's Italian. They kind of. Yeah. I thought that it was like taking liberties with like, well, this is kind of how they did talk historically. But then like, I remember I saw uh, the Harriet Tubman movie. And uh, they totally took liberties with taking out any like bad things about black people. And there was a, a white guy starting a mob and he goes, come on, everybody, let's get these thieves. And I was like, I guarantee that's not the word he used. Yeah. Well, they took a lot because they would go, how much is the Underground Railroad? And be like, oh, don't Jew me. Was, you know, yeah. Yeah. Was in there too. Yeah. <laughs> I was in there. It too. always goes back to, to people not liking people that all they've ever done is survive. Yeah, that's right. And then take all of the resources for themselves because you know what? If you got kicked How out of every society you, you. Uh, if you got kicked out of every society that you elevated yourself to, yeah, to have some real power, then you would also sort of want to hoard resources. Well, yeah, if everyone's Emotional attacking hoarding. you and taken away from you, that's you know, what I'm saying that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is just Hasidic social, sociopolitical theory. That's, That's what I bring what to the pod. That's what our show is. You're nailing That's what I bring it. Pods. Yes. And so what is the this staff? Would it be called a staff or no, a cane? No, that's, that's a hot topic, really cringy oh, cane that a, a sad man purchases. You're not mad at me. You're mad at the other guy that hurts you. But you take it out on me because you love me the most. And I accept that about you. And that's sure. the truth. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I want to be honest with you. I was laying in bed today in this mid panic attack that I had. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to Mike. He's talking me down. And I look down and I'm like, ow. And I look down and I swear to God, there is a cat head shaped <laughs> bruise on my fucking leg. Because I was like, hey. No, because he goes like this. This stupid fucker goes like this. He's like, me and Kyle Dunnigan are having a great conversation about free will. Ian is sitting over here dressed as Elvis. And she's dressed as Beetlejuice for a Halloween episode. And Dunnigan forgot to dress up. So he's just normal guy sitting next to a skeleton and we're Beetlejuice and Elvis. He's just going his tig. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then He's sitting next to a skeleton and we're talking about free will and Ian is getting very activated because as people do where they're like, there is free will, there is free will. And you're trying to explain, you're like, yes, you feel like you have free will. Because but it's all people like, that believe in no free will talk I in circles. I want to hit, you said, I, I have the free will to hit Jordan in the leg. And he went, I, oh, I don't. And he was getting so activated. And, he, and the whole time he's being like, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. And then finally he goes, I have free will. Watch. Bam. And smacks me so hard in the leg. And I swallowed it because I was too embarrassed in front of Kyle who like raised me comedically to be like "Ah!" so I just was like "Ah!" and then I go you're gonna be punished for that later (laughs) I I said you're gonna be punished for that later (laughs) and then I I let it go bondage and I was like you guys do have a serious relationship (laughs) and there is a literal cat head bruise on my leg I'm sorry and I have the free will to do this there, I'll get that one too. Half is you, you're living in a fantasy think, world. If you think you, I hit you harder than that, if you wouldn't, wouldn't you say I have the free will to give you this cane to hit me in the leg? I have the free will to give you no, because if I listen to you, that's not free will. Mm. Wait, and you say those people talk in circles. <laughs> that's what you just did. Yes, I think the whole. There is no free will, which that guy Sam Harris tries to really push on us. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but of course he does. Uh-huh. It's not up to him. Yes. Uh-huh. And so I th- I have this thing of it's like, like you're saying kind of why talk about it? Oh, uh, take your gum out. because Put it in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Where it Dude, belongs. Jordan, we're eating outside. Well, Jordan and I are sharing a 
salad with feta cheese outside. With TJ's in TJ's in my rocking chair. We're eating out of our hands. And Jordan's like, I don't know. He just loved me. He loved me. And he did. And she's got feta cheese hanging out of her hair. Do you know what's it was so, a good look? Do you know what's so there's always stuff in my hair when ever people are surprised at that. You look people, very pretty today. Um whenever <laughs> She God. can't take a compl- compliment. Well, it's a poltergeist response. <laughs> That's what it is. I I think you're gonna look. I think you're gonna look great in this tour coat that you're Stay buying. Stay away from using the light, my, Jordan. Ann. Using, using my uh, my discount, I think that thing's gonna look great. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nothing. Uh, it is true. It back is to crippling anxiety. <laughs> with emotional hoarding, Jordan. Yeah. Anytime somebody's Ian. like, you had a great Also, set. Ian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what it should be. Emotional and Ian's here too. Jordan. Um, I think it's crazy that given the, given, I wish Ethan was there last night, given the position I was in emotionally, how well I did on stand up on the spot. You did great. It was. I'm so proud of you. I was no sleep. And the first time I had done it, I had only done material because I didn't know. Oh, stand up on the spot is just improvised. Yeah. You yeah. would love it. You need to do it. I'm a terrible writer. Yes. <laughs> Join the club, brother. <laughs> I was just talking with somebody who doesn't who is not I kinda, in comedy. I don't want to be rude, but I kind of was looking for it. Oh, uh, you're an amazing writer. <laughs> 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 Give me that cane. Ah! <laughs> yeah, take it. Free will. Free will. Free will is real. I yes. go home, Kate's like, where did you get that cat bruise to? Uh, is Kate a <laughs> real you person? Bondaging someone? I like imagining that Kate isn't real because you talk about her on stage and so She much. lives in Canada, okay? <laughs> <laughs> where where at the other high school? Where do you yeah. where do you live? No, same high school, satellite campus. Oh gotcha. <laughs> Oh, I've I've heard these questions before. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's real. I kind of decided recently that I'm not going to talk about her on. The problem is, talk about her on stage too much. People are like I'm talking about your wife a lot. But if you, so then you you go okay, don't. But when you talk about her on stage, all the women in the audience are like, "This is a good dude," and. I do. I am a good dude, and I do like love her and think about her and venerate her, all that kind of yeah. stuff. So you're kind. Of, it's kind of a catch twenty two where you're like, don't want it to be too much, but also when it's absent from the, then I feel like some women when I go on stage, they're kind of like, is this going to be a really broy set? You mm. know, is he just going to be up here being like fucking? Blah. So it's, I love when it, you talk about it. it gives, I don't think uh, there's any negative. I actually, it. that's one of my bits. Yeah. Fucking blah. So yeah. I'll talk to you about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were about to compliment me. Sometimes it just begins out of anticipation. <laughs> yeah, that's after any set, somebody comes up and they're like, hey, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy. My whole family's like that. Can I tell you last night she's crushing on stage and then she does this thing about uh I don't know what to do during sex. I I, I don't bombs. even know what to say. I I'm just afraid I'm gonna, you know, like Gregorian <laughs> Chan or Tunisian like throat chant, like <laughs> and the crowd is everything up until that, they're like, Yeah, they're like, What the fuck is that? I know yeah. they like, weird is that also is like that. a bit that I do. It's so funny. Isn't it's that so weird? funny, but they were like, What they the fuck are these noises? <laughs> Yeah, and I, maybe some of them were like, is this okay to laugh at? Mm-hmm. I, did. Mm-hmm. I, went, I went really crazy in, it must have been Nashville because it did really well, but I just was making noises. And then it, I found it, it found its way to, oh, <laughs> Wow. It's like it would go into Native American yes. at the beginning, just the beginnings of it, and then it would make its way out of there. And then I could tell that they were like, "Is this okay?" And then I'd go find its way back in. But I just think chanting is so funny. I think it's so funny. noises are so funny. Yeah. you know what's the Buddhist chant? Inge rangi inge ho. What is it? You know what? Kate is a Buddhist, and. Uh, <laughs> And she does, uh, uh, she did it this morning. She does, nam myo renge kyo, nam myo renge kyo. So she's like a hardcore Buddhist that does that she when she's got her shit together. Whoa. She does it in the morning and then sometimes at night. Does she, you mean, does she live in New York City? Did you see her doing this? Yeah, this morning. She, you, she's here? Where? In oh, the city Canada? with you? In the city? Yeah, we live together. We own a house. So when you leave here, she'll be there? 
when I go down the road? Like we could call her and she'd come. To where? Could, here. It's her she, Yeah, she she's could. She lives. Wow. What? Yeah. I've just never, I've heard so much and I've never seen her in the idea. Because the big reason is because. Is well, there's two reasons. Bring her on stage? What are you no, no, no. About? But she, she'll come to some shows if it makes sense. If her friends are coming to the show, she, of course, will come to the show. Yeah. But she hates the comedy cellar. And oh, I've told I've told her I've been like, listen, if you go to the the VU mm. or if you know what she she has come to the Fat Black Pussycat a few times. Mm. She loves Daniel Simonson. Yeah. She loves uh um Letty Marcus, but she can Love see Lenny him the at best. the comic strip. He's the best. Right. He might be the best in the city. He yeah. might Dude, be the or, best. He is. Yeah, I think he might be the best in the city. He's so fucking so solid. So funny. Wait, who's the other person that I was thinking was so good? Good. Lenny Bruce. That's what I always almost call Lenny Marcus. <laughs> Lenny Marcus, but there was somebody else that I was like, you are low-key the best to watch. I can't remember who it was, but it was a weird one. He's Daniel so Simonson's good. really great, but if you see him enough, which people do at the cellar, you see him kind of bomb. Yeah. And that's not, that doesn't mean he's not a great comic, <laughs> but it is, it does sort of tell you like he has one speed. He kind of doesn't have a gear box, yeah. sort of. Yeah. But I've never seen him improvise. He had that show forever. Right. I want to see that. I think it's on Wednesdays. So. At St. Mark's, under yeah. St. Mark's, right? And yeah. And um, well, he's a, he's a guy that, like, if you're not on board right away, then it is going to be a long 15 minutes. It is. And you can see him <laughs> on stage being like, fuck. Yeah. But he, he's got to keep doing the act. Can I tell you, know? you? Which is something that both of you, if it's going a certain way, there is absolutely no fourth wall. Yeah. So I've even seen the two of you go out, do something. I do this. I was like, go out. You do something halfway through the <laughs> bit. It had You haven't even gotten a keyed response from the audience. You don't even, you might end the bit and the audience is like, yeah, just lift you up, take shoulders into the street, spilling champagne. But because of the vibe, halfway through the bit, you're like, you're not liking this. And I got to tell you, I'm uncomfortable. If you're uncomfortable, I'm yeah. actually more uncomfortable than you. So don't try yeah. and out comfortable me. Yeah. And Last so night, he literally, Ian's supposed to be doing, you're supposed to say, <laughs> you're supposed to say a thing. And then you make a, up a bit about that thing. Yeah. yeah and somebody suggestion. goes, mushrooms. And Ian goes, do you like mushrooms? And he, the guy was like, yeah. And he was like, what do you like about them? And I was like, Ian, Ian, it's, it's a prompt. Right, right. And, yeah, and you're just like, but how are you doing? Because you had slipped in mode of audience. Like you would save yourself at times by just being like, such and such, here's a bit. It's not working. Are you alive, sir? And it was crushed. <laughs> but it was so funny to watch you just be like, it is way easier for me to read you guys than to just be a guy up here getting things. But you know I, what I mean? I could never, um, I could never <laughs> not. I just took my shirt off. <laughs> on stage Did you last really? night. Yeah. And that's yeah. something I have not done. It was really fun. I have ripped my pants off and then duct taped them for the next show. But not like flat, not what I imagine you do before you go to bed every night. <laughs> I believe that you have a track suit and the pants. Come on. And I play the, the pants. I play the bowl. You go to sleep and you've team. just got you've got shorts that are the same cloth and material of the track. Yeah. Pants. So you're sleeping in the shorts version of those things. But no, I just like ripped. It was already ripped. And so I kind of ripped it and then left it on. People will come out to me. You guys probably have this, but they'll come to me and they'll be like, I was there. <laughs> it's your show two years ago where you completely ripped your pants off and then you duct taped them. You left and duct tape come back. And then you started yelling at the people and that you yelled at this one woman about how she, her pants are always together and they're never <laughs> ripped and she doesn't know freedom. And I'll say, I mean, wasn't that a crazy night? And I'll be like, no recollection. You do remember that, right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you had a bit that I came up to you and I was like, I watch it so often. It's like really disgusting that you did it one show and I came up to you and I was like, yeah, you did this bit. And you're like, no recollection. And I was like, that's crazy. It probably was pretty funny. Dude, the scarf yeah. bit, the scarf it's where you're like, thing. you what don't it? remember it. What is it? You're like, oh, this guy has a scarf on. And you're like, you know what you do when people. You know what you do when people are like, oh, I see you're wearing a scarf, faggot. Where's your baguette, faggot? <laughs> you take their scarf and you go, oh, you mean this scarf? Yeah. You choke them out and you go, look at me. 
<laughs> Look at me while I watch you die. <laughs> and it, it is so funny. I watch it so, the way that you do. Where do you watch it? YouTube. In your head. Oh. It's on, I say faggot on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're imitating Yikes. somebody Hell saying yeah, that. You're like, you're like, here's what you, you do if somebody comes up to you cool. and they're like, yeah. <laughs> you're saying they're a bad guy and the and the scarf guy's a good that guy. Yeah, but I did this, this thing called Tech <laughs> Crunch. Watch you die. And I did, and I did, I did like, I did this thing where I, so I did, it was front of all these tech people and Travis <laughs> Kalanick, who's like, um, he invented Uber. And his girlfriend was this violinist. I never would have expected. Yeah. I never what? would have expected. What? 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 Oh, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? He invented Uber. Oh, no, he invented the thing that tra oh. changed transportation. Yeah, completely. He and works at the bodega in <laughs> London on 69. <laughs> and so his girlfriend at the time was this violinist and she came... And she was so entitled, she brought a little dog with her to the show. No. And the dog kept sort of yapping, and she kept heckling me. And I was like, I'm just not going to. Then finally, she said, I go, you're talking all the time. Why are you talking all the time? And she's like, ah, something. And I go, and you brought a dog? Why did you bring a little dog to the show? No one else brought a dog. And she, I kept saying like that. What's with the dog? And she went, um, she went something like, well, I'm... And then before she answered, I go, I mean, everyone in here is like, is this bitch from Palo Alto or what? And they got a big laugh. And then the next day, all of the blogs said that I called a woman the B word. And the B what? word was oh. thrown around. Oh, and so what I did, crazy. I was doing an impression of everybody else. And yes. So it's the same deal. But it's now it's too dangerous to even do that. No, because who it comes out of your mouth. No, no. Fuck no way. Fuck Where are you seeing the context? detriment? You were B right word is and they were wrong. Bitch. You can't believe they called it the B word. He called somebody a cunt last night. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, you know, I had this Greek comedian and this uh this Greek comedian and a Portuguese comedian walk into in. a bar. Oh. I was there with them. We thought about calling it, but at the stand, I did a show where it was the Portuguese comedian, he's the funniest, best comedian in, in Portugal. And then the Greek comedian, I think, is the best. He is. They're, English speaking, they're both the best in the country, which is hilarious because I performed in Greece. And after the show, there were a bunch of comedians that came to see me. And I was like, ah, so cool. You guys, did you understand all of it? And they're like, yeah, you know, most of us speak uh, English here. I think they probably were like, fuck you. <laughs> but they're like, yeah, no, we speak English. So we got the gist of it and we've watched you before online. And I was like, that's cool. And I was like, so are there a lot of like Greek comedians like in, in the country right now in Athens? And they're like, yeah, us. And I was like, no, I know you guys are comedians, but like, are there a lot of like, what's the stand up scene here? Like, and they were like, it's us. It's the eight of us. Whoa. Oh my God. And so it was really, really interesting. But both these guys had moved to London. I did this. I tried to do this. Like I brought this guy. I have a doc on Philadelphia where I was performing at the punchline while the Eagles were in the Super Bowl and everybody thought they were going to win and all of us. And every night I would go on and I would be like, who's going to win? E, A, yeah. do the whole thing. Oh, e. And we were going to have this triumphant thing. We were going to take the cameras and see people they grease the poles and it doesn't matter. And they'd be going up to, and they lost. And yeah. so it was this really weird and they lost for a bullshit holy call. And so it was this very strange thing where this documentary that was supposed to be this triumphant Philadelphia thing, because I love Philadelphia, it yes. was uh, sort of a tragic comedy. Yeah. At the end, and we put so much money on the <laughs> Eagles. And I have won basically all the money that I lost. I won all this money on the Chiefs because my family's from Southeast Kansas. So right. I've been on them a couple times. This, uh, this guy who died who owned... Um, the Kansas City Comedy Club, Stanford and Sons Comedy Club. He like was a huge Chiefs fan. They never got to the Super Bowl. So when they did, he died right before that. We put all this money. Um, but the, I try to do a doc about me and on, on the European tour and look how fun it is and behind the scenes and all that stuff. And now looking back, I'm like, that was so dumb and self-aggrandizing. We went to Paris, did it. And then in London, I started talking to a friend of mine, this guy, Jared Christmas, who's a Kiwi comic, just about the London scene. Kiwi. Like, you know, what's it like? Kiwi. What's it like? And slowly the documentary morphed into talking about these emerging stand-up scenes all over yeah. Europe. And there it's 
right now in Europe, it's like the early 2000s. Almost actually 90s, like Luna Lounge. I was never here for that. Yeah. But they basically, like we invented stand-up comedy. Yes, it's yeah. exactly Rafifi era. And a wow. lot of these places that go, oh, there aren't purpose-built comedy clubs except in Oslo, Norway. Mm -hmm. So it is Rafifi. They find these smaller theaters. They have a lot of bar shows. But it's, it's starting to emerge in these places. And so we spoke to comedians. I had the guy for Paris, London, Finland, Helsinki, Finland, Amsterdam, and Estonia. And here's what the scene is like in Estonia, okay? Because the scene in Finland... Wait, how is this related to the Philly one? It's all the same doc? So it is the, no, it's the same thing. The documentary started out as something, and then it transformed Change. into... Oh. The Philly doc became... It's actually, you watch the Philly doc, and at the end of it, you kind of almost want to start crying. It's like really? so because you. I interview all these Philadelphia people, and you oh, can see so how much excited. it means right. to them. It really means, but it's not even at, at the end of it. We sort of show the aftermath a little bit, but Ugh. you didn't need to have a lot of. It took about a minute of seeing these people. An old, an elderly woman. It's just all these people have come to this giant. The Fillmore is where we watch the game old woman is like crying because she's like i guess i'll never see them win it's oh my Ugh. it's so sad and so i told my friend to leave her husband because he was sobbing about the eagles game okay um just felt like it was you know a testament to an emotional Lack of capacity of the man's talking about the importance of what um, all this is, you know, putting <laughs> <laughs> try and get out of here with the pack. <laughs> what happened? I guess he's offended. He left. Oh, Jesus. And he took the my prized possession, sort of. So that was a weird moment. <laughs> And I try to go he after him, but blast fucking Jordan, Jordan which hit is me obviously with a cane a... so hard. So now I carry uh, a knife and I'll okay. avenge the stealing no, of my right. toy. I, I mean, he's a fucking yeah. So I sobbing. Uh... I mean, like, <laughs> like, and yeah. I'm like, that's not your. You're not. Imagine if you're on the team. But it's all they have. Yeah, and but they he put has everything. They're so hard. Yeah, yeah, but I know. But, but it who goes cares back to her? like, yeah, he yeah. can get She's another one of those. Football team. Yeah, you get another one of those. Yeah, you don't get another shot at the bowl. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think so. It kind of it changed, you know, and so this documentary in um, Finland sort of changed too. We just have hundreds of hours, but the guy that did the Philly doc also did the uh, European stand up doc. And the weirdest thing was Finland, they were the funniest. And we hung out after my show at this bar, and it's so, Finland is so bizarre. So we went to this bar, and in the background, their ambient music is Norwegian death metal. It's like nice. actually Finnish death metal. Yes. And it's loud enough that you hear it, but it's sort of ambient music. Yeah. And these guys get so drunk, but you can't tell they're drunk until they tell you. And so we're talking, no one seemed drunk, but she was finishing these things called long drinks. And then one of them suddenly goes, I'm, I'm very drunk. <laughs> and then he got up and he ran, <laughs> ran out of the bar, <laughs> ran full sprint. It was so amazing. But one of these guys, then I went and I did a Finnish show where everybody's speaking Finnish, but I went up and spoke in English. Yeah. I, yeah. And my material didn't go well. What does Finnish kind of sound like? Um, Heard how to. But I go to dad, who was that? So it's like darker Swedish okay. almost, but they sound like they're very unhappy and okay. they are during the winter. Um, sorry. And so, uh, and so there was one comic, more, he had yeah. these glasses and he did a little ukulele thing and his timing and his speech was very laconic. So the whole thing was like, he was so funny, but I couldn't understand a word he said. I was laughing yes. the whole time. Have and you guys ever seen that? Have you seen a well, comic? Speaking in, of understanding, yeah. what does laconic mean? Yeah, is that I don't. Um, I don't know. No, I don't know. I just, I I, was he doing black voice? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of blackface, black voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, he just it's sort of talk like this then it's through that. Japanese? So I couldn't understand. Kind of. 
Yeah, that's a little more poltergeisty, but that's that's oh, your sorry. wheelhouse, I think. <laughs> that's I you, at, That's your safe emotional um, space. Well, that, <laughs> I played Norway. <sighs> I played Norway, and everyone oh, you did. did. Where, where? I uh, Bern, Norway. Simonson hooked me up. With oh me. wow! I did wow. a European tour right before Bergen the or Bern. Bergen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Burn it's cool. Switzerland is where I played. Oh wow. Okay. Um as well. And uh the first night, demolished English speaking show. Amazing. I'm a god. Next night, last night of the tour, I was the only English speaker on the show. Wow. But they were like, they that's love tough. American comics. Oh, bah, bah, bah. We are lying about that. <laughs> <laughs> I bombed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wreckage. not good. Quite a way to end the tour. Yeah. I ended oh, up worse. poorly performing with a Chinese man later that night. Because you were chasing bad? a set. You're like, oh, yeah. I got to get yep. one more. Yep. Why is yep. it bad? Why is what bad? Performing there. No, Norway's amazing, but for the he show where bombed. Ev- I bombed. Because it's impossible to follow. They just have been listening to Everyone's their- crushing in Norwegian, yeah, so and then I go up in English, and it's just different. And they, well, they've been hearing someone talk about inside jokes and cultural yep. stuff and all that, and then you get up, and people are almost like, okay, American, let's see yeah. what the deal. But, but that, the, the, the first night guys, was, was a multi- language yeah, and show so that's great, and it was amazing for, yeah. oh, yes, I see, I see. yes 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 i did uh, my favorite place to perform is oslo and i know a lot about norwegian culture so i kind of talk about that but i wanted to ask you guys cash levy who i do a podcast with it's called cashing in with tj miller and he's uh he's he's the host and he's a tough time getting guests and so he's the not the show. name of the show no hmm. well yeah it is it's cashing in with tj miller oh and his name's cash levy Ah, and so being Ian, that must be tough. Yeah, uh, and so I think that <laughs> with Jordan, <is> that, yeah. <laughs> God. That's, I asked you, you a million times if you wanted to change the name of the show, and you said no, and you liked it. It's too big now to change. Okay. Yep. Good. You're not mad at me. You're mad at something else. I'm not mad. <laughs> I think it's. Is it me? No. Okay. What are you mad at? I'm not mad. I want to know about Cash Levy and the Wigwags. So Cash Levy is an interview show, and he's the guest, but he has a tough time getting interviews. I don't know if people don't like him or he doesn't have a lot of friends, so I'm the only guest that's been on the show for seven years. That's and hilarious. So you guys should check it out. There'll be a link at the very bottom of the description of this show. You know what? Very bottom. Past the hashtags. Put Lower it on the top. That. You heard it here first. Link at the top. God. That's what it's like being in. <laughs> you make the call, it happens. This is 106.2. Do you want to know Jordan. what it's like being with Jordan? What? What's it like? What is it like? Oh, God, that face. Put What's the face like? away. That's <laughs> <older guys. laughs> It must be amazing. <laughs> uh, and so Cash Levy has this theory. I want to hear what you guys thought about this. Yes. That the last show of the weekend... When you're working a club, is what determines how you feel about the club. So you can kill every show, and then if Sunday night or late show Saturday or whatever it is is awful, you're like, "Fuck that place! It's the worst ever." But if you bomb and they're rowdy and they're and then Sundays so every show sucks, and then Sunday you fucking kill, you just crush. Then you're like, "Can't wait to go back, man." That place is one of the best clubs in the United States. What do you think, ladies first? Yeah, what's the thought with Jordan? Well, I think that sometimes Saturday night can be like the drunk audience, right? So it can be like a magical yeah. thing where they're playful and good, or it can be annoying. I think if you have like, I think it's a percentage. If you have two shows that you're like, fuck yeah, then you're like, that club is great. But I think that the shows that I've done where it's like Thursday is amazing and then it keeps tapering, then I'm like, ah, it's a little, that club's flat. I had one of those But recently. if it's like great and then Friday late show is great, and then Saturday kind of sucks, uh, it'll balance it. It's almost like it needs to be. I'm, I'm on team your opinion Thank you. on this. Really? I, I think if the last show of the weekend sucks and I come out net positive, I'm like, no, it's a great fucking place. And well, sometimes so it is just Saturday late show. You don't exactly. sell as well. And like, I never blame it on the club. So let me let me double back. I always maybe, blame it on me. Maybe boss. I put this out. Maybe I phrase this incorrectly. Except sometimes crowds it's not are how you feel bullshit. about the club. It's how you feel about the weekend. 
So do you look back at the weekend uh, and you go, that fucking ruled when you had two good shows and then two bad shows? No, I really have to. Ended with the. Because you take your shirt off. I take my shirt off. It's being Bert. It's with oh, with, no! with Chrysler Finance. Oh no! I have a very high standard of what a really a good show is. Like I'll get off stage and people are like, "That was great," and I'm like, "I hated every moment of that." I yeah. do, I do it when I get off stage and be like, well, "That was great, man. They loved it." I'm like, "I hated that audience." That's yeah. how I was in Minneapolis. Yeah. Remember that, Ethan, on your phone. This is a really sad part of the show. You're like that all the time. I have to go. I have to go. You you did great, and then you go. No, I sucked, and I go. No, it was great. But then other audiences. And I stay up all night I hating myself. I won't get a ton of laughs. Like I'll, I'll get laughs and stuff, but I'll get off and I'll be like, God, I love that fucking audience. Yeah, they, I'll have a show where they energy. laugh, where we get into a giggle fest about something that is ridiculous. I got into a giggle fest with an audience. I think it was last night about the yogurt. About I was like a guy carrying around yogurt, and you're like, what flavor yogurt's that? And he's and he was like doesn't have a flavor and for some reason that got all of us giggling and i was like i loved every second of that yeah that's the best i did have you ever had this i i've almost given up on it it's so sad but i have this story and it's a bit about going to wanting ice cream i haven't really done it lately because i've lost faith in it wanted ice Gain cream gain it back the faith and that's what it's like being in with Jordan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think he was gaining faith as he was beginning to tell that story. Oh. And then I lost it. I thought he needed a rah rah moment. No, you didn't need that. He just you don't want a rah rah? Tell me if you tell yeah, me what you it. if you have similar experience. Let's hear it so, and we'll see if you should give up or not. So I wanted ice cream and I was what? in Erie, Pennsylvania. What the fuck was that, lady? Jesus, why are you spitting? <laughs> he goes. This is the looping thing that you do. It's crazy. He goes, he goes, well, let me tell the story and then you can decide if we need a rap rap moment. And you go, great. How about this? You tell the story and then we'll decide if you need a rap. There's something fucked in your brain, dude. Oh, I'm fucked in the brain? I'm fucked in a You're different way. You're literally going, hey, <laughs> last night I was going to go to the hospital and this morning. Hey, I'm up we said not on pod, faggot. <laughs> That's a fair can, thing to say. I can see why. Ian fucks kids. I what? Can, That's not true. Go ahead. I can see why the podcast is successful. <laughs> Jesus. See? No, I need that. See? How do you, you pick up <laughs> a shoe and drink out of that? <laughs> so it's the, the story goes, I was in Erie, Pennsylvania. Ow! Sorry. I just crossed my legs and out of my balls. How about you tell us the story right now, and then we'll tell you. You guys talk. If we. Yeah. <laughs> That's how stories work. <laughs> so, thank you. A check, please. Uh, a boy. I'll take these tenders to go. Uh, I'll have one. <laughs> I'll have what they're having. Um, I'll have what they that were having. Uh, so, I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, and I don't, ha I don't have to tell a story. I don't. Oh. I don't need to. No, ow. Something wrong. That'll happen. We got to talk about that dick in a second. All right. We get I can't believe dick. it'll go in any direction. It's a divining rod, and the water is whatever <laughs> other genitalia exists. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I wanted ice cream. And I uh, sometimes when I want ice cream, I'll buy it and I'll eat it because I'm an adult. And for so long in our lives, you there was an intermediary between us and ice cream, right? Yes. So you had to ask somebody for ice cream, and they could say no. They could just say no, and you had no way to buy or anything. So I, this was an occasion where I said, I want ice cream. I'm going to buy it. And I'm going to eat it. But there was no ice cream store in Erie, Pennsylvania. I was like, what the fuck is going on? But I saw a place called Rita's Custard, and it looked like an ice cream shop. It had the same color scheme and everything. They had buckets. and Custard. So I go in the over. Name. So I go. So, so I go. I go. Uh, oh, what's and they're all sorbets in the buckets. Mm -hmm. So I say to the woman working there, this girl, I go, Oh, so you only have sorbet? And she's like, What do you mean? I was like, You don't have any ice cream. She's like, no, We have ice cream. And I was like, Cool. Uh, you have ice cream? She was like, Yes, we have custard. And I go, So you don't have any ice cream? And she goes, No, we do. And I said, So where is it? And she turned and she pointed to all these machines behind her. And I go, oh, it's soft serve. And she goes, no, 
and then I left. <laughs> And I had a giggle best about that at the comedy store in the main room. I was crying laughing. I think I was there. It. Yeah. And I think I was, I was crying, there. crying laughing. I think so. And I couldn't stop laughing. And the audience just loved it. And I was like, this is the greatest story. This is the greatest thing I've ever come up with. Right after that night, <laughs> it's never worked. Yeah. It's never worked as well as it did. Yep. It works, but I can't get it to make me laugh or to kill like it mm. did. Do you guys have bits like that? And if so, totally. how long before you give up on the rah-rah? Well, I will say, I think there's something nice about that. Here's Ian's penis. <laughs> the rest of the room is any type of genitalia. <laughs> any, yeah. Anything that anybody might have. You'll find it. Oh, everybody. Hello. Stop wasting your time. If you want to learn a new language, you got to use Babbel. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Use Babbel and use our promo code SKA because we get a little kickback and you get a little discount. Other language learning apps are basically just games that teach you nothing. Duolingo, boo hoo. Trying to bag a hottie on that European trip? Ay, ay, ay. You're going to need to know how to speak like a loca loco. Babbel's tips and tools are accessible, approachable, and delivered with conversation based teaching. That's right. Uh, I love muñecas. That's little doll in Spanish. And you'd know that by using Babbel. Mi amor es muñeca. Me gusta muñeca. Mi favorita muñeca. I just said a couple things in Spanish. Use Babbel to figure out what I said. Studies show that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to an entire semester of a college language course. Don't go to college. They're not forgiven student debt. No mas forgiveness. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for being in with Jordan listeners. That's right. Babbel.com slash ska. 55% off at Babbel.com slash ska. B A B B E L dot com slash ska S K A rules and restrictions may apply. Adios, mis amigos. Uh, I think there's something so nice about though because it's the moment and it's a gift you're giving to them that can never be replicated. And sometimes I try to replicate it and I feel like it's disingenuous. I would want to kill myself too if I had to yeah. talk about this. Dude, last night we're walking. I'm so, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm crying from the breakup. I'm so upset. And Ian goes, <laughs> Ian goes, listen, buddy, sometimes in life, in relationships, and I go, shut the fuck up. She goes, I don't want to hear it right he goes, now. And he goes, fair, 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 <laughs> fair, fair. fair. <laughs> It was like a moment where you immediately we knew. You were like, laughing. how dare. I was trying to be Mr. Let's learn a lesson. Yeah. And it was yeah, like. Because yeah, you want to do something. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Well, it's fine to be like, listen, here's the deal with this circumstance. But to be like me, man with cane is going to tell you I how life. How life. This is. is. I like. Sitting and talking and being like, yeah, ba ba Okay, bah. man who likes sitting and talking and going, bee bee, ba ba ba, is going to tell me, listen, in life. I don't, I don't want to interrupt, but I think he actually said, ba ba bee bee. Oh, And then you kind of came in hot. Oh, you said ba ba bee bee. Ba ba bee bee. Oh, and next time. saying bee bee, ba ba. That's, don't even bring that up. And now she's open to the communication. Yes. Yes. Life is sometimes. Well, Sometimes life's kick you in the dick, and and you got to say, all right, fine. You got Sometimes. one in on me, and I'll get one in on you later. But I'm gonna keep going, and I'll find your life, and I'll fucking kick you in the fucking ball sack. And sometimes you cross your legs <laughs> on your own balls. You do, and nothing happens. It hurts. It hurts, then you're uh, yeah, but you move <laughs> Wait on. A second. How do you know that? <laughs> She's crossed her legs on some other guy's balls. That's what you should do to that guy. I have my favorite thing in the world is one when men hurt their when they cross their legs and hurt their own balls, and two when they sit down too fast and hit their balls. Mm -hmm. I find nothing funnier than a man hurting his own. Well, body. then why weren't you giggling it up when it happened to me twice just now? When did you hurt your own balls? He was in on it. He was listening actively. <laughs> this is the issue. You don't listen actively. And you don't is listen actively. And so neither of you are talking to anybody. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Can't you hear anything I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, no! Jesus. What the fuck? Oh, boy. 
God, that scared the Now shit Jordan's out. having a good time. <laughs> that scared the shit out. Of me. Now we're having fun with Jordan. <laughs> And who's being here? <laughs> who's being here? That's what they should say to you Sitting when you're being here. That's what uh, they should say to you when you're being here. Who's being here? Who's being like a dog. Here. Who's I being here? You are. Like a, you are. Scratch like my a head. baby. Scratch my head. Oh, More like a baby. I than love a when people get hurt on purpose. I love when people hurt themselves. I really enjoy it. Oh, here we go again. You would love Kate. That's her favorite thing. She has a cartoon brain. So when people fall or they get hurt or they run in, Nothing's she loves run in, running into something. Oh. And I don't think it's that funny for some reason. Dude. When somebody trips. Where I like silent comedy a lot. But yeah, if somebody trips, I'm immediately like, are you okay? Are you okay? You know? Dude, my Definitely, best friend. But if it's your buddy. Like one time we were walking in and he went, he slid. He's like being annoying as fuck. He's like, no, ah, I'm not. We were all laughing and having fun. No, and be mean to me because it's sorry. making you feel better. He's Go not for being it. Annoying, but he's being like, he's like loud. Ian, and then, uh, who? Ian. And then he slips on this metal in the rain. He slips on this metal and and then shoots up into the air somehow. Then comes down, lands on a cactus. Oh my god! Flies. Where Dude, was the cactus it, it, it from? Was, we were in Austin. Lands okay. on a cactus. That's flies important. Flies back up and goes down like this. Homeless man right here sees homeless man who's like <laughs> has to jump away from homeless man. And it was like I was like crawling, <laughs> laughing, like crawling through my own tears. It was he shot up. I watched the homeless man be like, whoa. Whoa! And watching him be like, no. It was. I think epic. I have it on video because I was trying to get a video really? of all of us. Oh, and so I wasn't funny. watching where I was going. So I tripped and it just triggered this whole chain of events. That's and then so I funny. had to pull cactus out of my ass. You really did get yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. funny. There was, I did slip on wood at our place. It was raining. Oh. I slipped on wood and I just, I did the actual <laughs> boom. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah, yes, so I went the all the way in the air. Slip. Kate, Kate thought that was hilarious. One time I saw Kate, that was funny. She slipped on the wood and fell into another room, but only half of her. <laughs> and the only part that stayed out was like her upper torso. So she was like, ah! And then it landed and I could only see half of her. And she was like, ah! <laughs> but that was pretty funny. And then, uh, yeah. And I like, one of the funniest physical bits I ever did was I did a video talking about these boots that I got. They're free this in winter in Denver. And I was like, this company gave me the boots. I love the grip. I love the comfort. And I love that. And then I just fucking on purpose just flew off into a snowbank. And so it was yes. like, I just wanted to no! <laughs> and one of my favorite jokes that I, I, I've done this, but it's, I love, <laughs> and people do it. People do it. So you, you've probably seen someone do it, but it's when somebody, when somebody's falling or go, and they go, no, 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 no. <laughs> To me, that's the funniest because it's like you yeah. saying something. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no one's listening. It's just you against the world being like, no, 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 no. So I put that in so many things. That's like so, I, one time I was driving in a car and the guy driving, we were and we hit ice and we were just going right towards the tree and he was just going, not the tree, not the tree, not the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was laughing in the car, maybe almost dying. Him yeah. just going, not the tree, not the tree, not the tree, not, not the tree, that, not that, not oh. this. Dude, there's a video. <laughs> <laughs> From free will to eating shit. This is being in. When you when you went with jo- and also Jordan. When you went when you went yeah! There's a video and this is bad but there's a video <laughs> From 9 11, uh, this girl in a building, and they're, the mom's taping it. And she's like, Oh, mom, sure, it's just orange juice. We're not putting vodka in the orange juice. And the mom's like, Oh, did you put vodka in the orange juice? She goes, No, mom, it's just, No! And then you look over, the towers collapse. Oh, my God. That is hilarious. No, mom, there's no vodka. No! <laughs> That's like the woman stomping berries, the wine woman, and then she falls out and she's like, ow, 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 ow. I'm, That sound is because you know the pain she's feeling. She's feeling like shin pain. Like something God, yeah. hit there's, her shin hard. There's, I've, I okay, forgot about so that So me and, me so and Shane were showing this video to people to sell her, and Val legitimately got upset with me for showing her. There's a boy. There's a video of a boy. So a, guy, a dad is shitting on the toilet. You see his legs. CCR's fortunate son is playing. Bow, now, 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 now. 
and a kid shows up with a gun, a, a rifle, uh, an air rifle, and he puts some sort of rabbit or some sort of groundhog or something on the floor, and he goes, boom, shoots at it, and the dad goes, Riley, no! And the car hits the dad in the chest, and the boy goes, and slinks away in the bathroom, and it's the most insane thing I've ever Did somebody seen. somebody die? No, no, no. Oh. The rabbit just kind of it, um got the um. I, I also moved. I love the idea that that guy Riley! is like no, because he knows if he shoots at that rabbit, it's gonna jump, hit me in the chest, and it hits him, and you see his what? And that's when the shitting ends, and you see his legs go when the rabbit. <laughs> I need to see it. I don't know what's is going there, on. Is there nicotine in that? Oh, is there? No, no, yeah. no. This is, this okay. is a vape. No, but it's, it's also a flashlight, apparently. No, no, no. Wait, yeah, yeah, It's like a new vape. Here, do you want a vape? What Just is it? Just put it to your mouth and press no, it. No, it's a taser. It. He's trying to end your life. Oh, damn it. It's not charged. That would have been great. Sort of. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what's weird? So are both of you in part friends because you smoke nicotine? No. The first time we ever really bonded, we chain rip cigarettes on the way to a gig in Philly listening to the Misfits. Hmm. Oh, that's really cool. You smoke a lot of cigarettes. Yeah. How many packs a day do you think? Two. <sighs> One and a half to two. One and a half to two. And do you smoke cigarettes at all? With the breakup lately, I have been, but I just vape. Vape. I had a guy today, I was at a Bitcoin bar. Weird. Which is very interesting. Wait, what? what? Yeah, so there's this guy. So my... The dive bar that I used to go to, which is probably healthier that I don't go there anymore because they yeah. get drunk and like the bartenders are drunk, but they would always give you shots. And so you take a lot of shots there, but you, I would get blackout drunk sometimes. But for the most part, it was just like a chill thing. And then I found out because of Ryan Reese, I invited them late night. I used to be able to show up there at fucking four in the morning and they keep the bar open. Oh yeah. It was super fun. And so I invited uh, David Suarez, Ryan Reese, a couple of like their friends and stuff. And we were all drinking and it was really, really fun. And I came over to Ryan and I'm like, how you doing, man? You know, we're kind of, and he's like, well, I'm not drunk. And I was like, really? Why not? He's like, I don't know. I've had seven vodka sodas. And I was like, well, and it was like the matrix. It was so insane because then all of these memories from the past came together. It was like usual suspects. I was like, wait a second. And it, I, I saw them give it, you want another shot? It's like, I think I've already had two before. They're like, have another shot. It, uh, I realized like all the regulars there only drank beer. They didn't drink any of the liquor. I realized that if I ordered something, they'd sometimes be like, we don't have that, but they would. And I was like, I guess, and it just boom, boom, boom. And I was like, do you think they water down their liquor? And Reese goes, it is New York. And that was the end. That was the last time I ever went to that bar. Wow. I took That's the last green... time I ever saw Ryan Reese. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He died. He's the Kaiser Soze <laughs> of like revealing uh, bad business practices. And so I took the Greek and the Portuguese there once to sort of show them this is like the dive bar that I used to go to, but that's the last time I've been there and ever. And I knew I'm on texting terms with like all of the bartenders, the owner of the place, all this stuff. But once you find out that Did a you bar, say something to them? Did you go, yo, are you watering down the so, fucking drinks? No. Why? Because only two things can happen. One, they lie and say no, which is worse. Or two, they say, yeah, we do. And I'm like, so why didn't you ever tell me? You just were serving me watered down liquor. Yeah. So it's a lose lose. No, it's, it's a, a win zero, win. It's a zero sum no, game. No, because then you go, hey, fuck you. I'm never coming back. Why would you do that to me? You're not a friend. You know, it was like at that Stanford since Kansas City Club, all those guys have been to federal prison. They're all criminals. Yeah. In the club, all of them. It's like an old school for reals comedy club. It was really I fun love to play. It. And then at one point, they invited me to dinner. And they were like, you know, things have been really hard at the club lately. And I was like, well, what if you do this? And can't you maybe get, that's ah, really tough. And then all of a sudden I was like, <clears throat> oh my God, I'm a mark now. They always said I was a good guy, but they're trying not to pay me. And I called Nikki Glazer, and I was like, what am I going to do here? And she's like, well, how do you feel about the money? And I was like, I think if I tell them, because they were, I think they were going to go, we can pay in installments. We can give you a little money here, but then, and then I would never... Or they were just going to be like, we can't pay it just out of the goodness of your heart. Can you? And I said, so I, I don't think she goes, look, Craig Glazer, because these guys were the first people to really headline me. Mm -hmm. 
she goes, I've cut off my thing, my relationship with Craig Glazer a long time ago. He's the main brother. She goes, but I'm a woman, so it's different. I go, yeah, I know. I can't believe you even put up with it as long as you did. And she goes, but if it's important to you to get the money, then just say, you got to give me the money or I'm never coming back here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sick one of your agents on this. I mean, you've got people that can just go after this, go after this, go after this. She goes, but if you don't need the money right now, and you, this is a while ago, you don't need the money right now, then I think, and I was like, I am, I'm thinking of walking from this without sort of doing all of that stuff. And she's like, well, that's up to you. I would think about it for a full day because you once you make that decision, you can't no. go back. And I did the last show that weekend, and it was one of the best. I've had like, you know how in your mind you forget about certain sets? And then it comes back just like right now and you like boom or just transported to that time on stage. And yeah. you're, it's like, it, it, it's better than any drug. It's better than, I was going to ask you guys cause you don't drink. Right. Neither right. Do you. And so do you guys smoke weed? No. And so is the comedy truly, truly the drug of choice for you guys? And is it something we all know you like Prozac. <laughs> I'm using it. <laughs> and, uh, and so, <laughs> she's gone. He's okay. And she never spoke again. He's okay. And so He's I also okay. took some Clon Pond last night, but that was a necessity. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But a good so Klondike is it, bar. So the stand up though, it, it is it drug enough for you guys? Like, no, I need enough? love. I need I need cigarettes. I need danger. I need this. I need that. Uh, you da, need, da, da, he da, needs da, codependency. Da. And I and guess, so, so are you an yeah, adrenaline junkie, yeah. kind of? Do you ever do... I like riding my bike in the city without a helmet in yeah, compromising I situations. I like riding I my motorcycle. I shaved my handlebars really? down so I could go through traffic easier. <laughs> well, that is crazy. Yeah. But I just bought a helmet, a collapsible helmet. And collapsible I'm, helmet? Yeah, what are you but talking I, I'm about? I'm having... They don't... It's still... I need a helmet that fits in this, is what I need. But they what? Don't, they just don't make one. Oh. And then I and then I, I tried it. I go, I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna be the safe guy and wear it. And I became one of those fucking 1970s motorcyclists. Who's like, I need the wind through my hair. Yeah, yeah. This isn't being alive. This is being contained. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, that's I how I a feel seat when I'm driving. I don't like seatbelts, and and I hate when the car beeps and boops and stuff when you don't wear the seatbelt. If I want to not wear you it, have to buy, you have to buy the buckle and then cut it off and put it in like that. You can get them on Amazon. You just get them and you stick it in. Buckle your seatbelt. You'll I, be happy about it. I and do now. You can, the reason why if, you don't like helmets is because you don't like the way your hair looks when you take the helmet off. That's true. Yeah. That's very a true. Fuck how I look. You have look good hair. Look at this. Occasion I love your hair. Then I why love your not? Hair and the mustache is it. It's a perfect compliment. <laughs> Although I saw a picture of you without a mustache and Not you looked so great. No, no, no. It was bad. Jordan doesn't like it. I don't like that. She texted me about that before the show. Ethan is keying in and out of this. He's paying attention. He's not. He's paying attention. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You look, you don't look great. And who's this kid? <laughs> ah, it's a fun one. That's my, I me and my grandfather no, no. at my high school graduation. So are you ever transported back to a set? I'm transported think, back to that time so, right now when my think, family think, was alive. Oh my God, this is one of the greatest drugs. It's one of the greatest moments. What? what? Sorry, I'm doing a face so that you look like. You're doing the face? That's what he looks like. Really? Oh, yeah. It I was Sonny. Like Let me see. Sonny. God, no wonder he became a comedian. This kind of looks like me <laughs> at that point when I was like, I, I kind of look do like something. I kind of look like you in uh, She's Out of My League. A little bit. Longer little. hair, but not a lot longer. You look kind of an afro this, now, right? This really is a look. What? You kind of had an afro. I don't think it right? was very long hair. But you know what? I fell I in love with you in that movie. Thanks, man. I fell in love movie. with you during this podcast. That's how you know I'm a real friend. I didn't fall in love with the man on stage. Whoa. I fell in love with the man on a couch. Whoa. Now, Jordan, on the other hand, it keeps happening over and over. <laughs> I saw her on stage. I saw her off stage. We really sailed the deal at Skankfest. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Moses. Boy, oh, she boy. She introduced me and I... Boy, oh boy. When I was on Mushrooms, I clung to his back 
at yeah. that. Oh, oh we my were at the strip club together. That was fun. And I would, yeah. I would so just fun. hold on. To and I was so I loved you being the ringmaster of that. I thought you were so funny. I like that he would be the, the ringmaster, not the ringleader. <laughs> it says all these rings. I'm the master, not the leader. Yeah, you are a ringmaster, yeah. Jordan. Again, thank you. Thank so you. Much. And the gatekeeper. <sighs> Oh, that was such From a dramatic night, and I was on keeper? mushrooms. Gate keeper the and the ringmaster. Also, I am the gatekeeper. So, that was a good night. I uh, it was a great night, and so I did that set. It was transcendent, I really believe. And I got off stage, and Craig Glazer, this guy who didn't want to pay, he goes, DJ. They all dog like this. DJ, <laughs> DJ, meet me in the office. Yeah. And I was like, okay, and he was like. We'll talk about the thing in the office. And I was like, I'll be right there, Craig. And he leaves. And I just walked out. And I never talked to him again or saw him again ever. Wow. Because I looked at him. This happened with my bodyguard also. I looked at him in that moment. And I had this realization. I was like, it's never going to get better. It's just never going to get better. It will only be downhill from this moment unless I sort of say goodbye. And I did it with my... You know. um, I. <laughs> he, he was paying attention yeah. Dude between this and, and the heroin guy on the train last night That fucked me up okay. I was like I am this guy Where he just was yeah. Nodding out dropping his phone Yeah that's the tough one Same thing over and over It's never gonna get better You gotta walk away you just walk Yeah away. you do have to The way it's the definition of insanity Is doing the same thing over and over And, expect and expecting different, a different result. results which is why I'm but trying to stop. You are a well-read man. You yes. are a learned man. And that's why I'm trying to stop jerking off because I expect to feel good afterwards and I always just hate myself. Really? Yeah. I just. Oh, did you grow up religious? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. But I always think that there, I'm like, you know, well, I, I meant, am insane. I meant with the oh, horn. <laughs> <laughs> I always think. That's one of the funniest oh, things I've ever said on a podcast. <laughs> I have to say that. I meant that about the horn. Yeah. No, <laughs> Yeah, just that she, I said, go ahead. And she was like, thank you. Finally, somebody who will let me talk. And I'm like, no, no, the horn. I'm talking about the horn. Go ahead with the horn. No, I meant go ahead and shut the fuck up. No, go ahead, go ahead and play. No, go play ahead your and... heart out. There it is. Thank you. I, th I always am like, well, it's okay. I'm, it, it, I'm a good comedian because I'm insane. So I have to keep myself in these insane paradigms. Yeah. No, but you're a good but comedian no. because you are who you are. Yeah, you're a good comedian. For a bunch of reasons, but it's not just the insane. You don't want to put yourself in weird situations so that you can get material. You put yourself in stupid situations. Yes, I think you know it's true. Back and back, a lot of people looking down on you. Ba, 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 b, 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 b. Not b, 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 ba, ba. Right. That was uh, Everclear. I you know love that song. Clear. I thought it was pretty opaque. Yep. So, <laughs> uh oh, now he's on a roll. Uh, but I do, I do think, I do think he's right. You can't keep going back into this. All right, Liquid Death Story. Well, how much longer do we have? <laughs> you try to be everything to everyone. Uh, I listened to that them album. Live. On the way to the Amish country I with my family. I saw them live. What's Santa yeah. Monica? I used to spend I Thanksgiving with an Amish family. Are you Amish? No, but I, my grandparents were friends as an Amish no, family. I'm a gang -a -gang -y. And, but and what, I would go What is up, your religious background? And I agree with that. I, I grew up again. Um, no, 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 no. Where's a knife? Um, <laughs> I grew up Catholic, but my grandparents were friends with an Amish family, and I used to go up there <laughs> and wear plain clothes and shovel manure and bale hay and help them on the farm, and we would kill turkeys with uh, a shotgun for Thanksgiving. You did all that, but then how do your parents feel about... <clears throat> You like when you finish jacking off, sorry, jerking off. When you finish that, Don't bring my so then you think how do my parents feel? What do you think no, no, I'm no, telling no. them about it? You, you, like you, how do you feel you feel like I shouldn't have done that? That's disgusting. Is it because no, of God? it's 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 gotten to the point where it's it's a job and I go, oh, I guess I gotta do this now. And then I do it and I'm like, what was the fucking point? It's, I see. You know, it's like Are you using your imagination or pornography? Pornography, but when I was using my imagination, it was a lot better. Yeah, 
I try to go the opposite direction recently. Because I think it can affect your sex life, and it didn't forever. Yeah. But then when we got to a place where, like, because when, I think this is true, but when women get older, they're kind of not down with the pornographic sex as much anymore. They want it to be more like romantic candlelit mm -hmm. stuff. And I think so, that is that does depend because I know a lot of disgusting women who are like, I just want to be, you know what I mean? And you're like, you're deeply at? unsatisfied with what you're doing professionally. You know yeah, what I mean? That might be it. You know I what I mean? So, yeah. Like, I just want to be, I want somebody to hold me down and say, you are doing great and you're a, and you're a famous person and everybody loves you. You know, you like porn. Bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are you talking about? They do. He knows what I mean. I do. What? Who's. Just like, you know, when you meet a woman who's like, she's like works in marketing, she's very boring. And she's like, I want you to choke me out and tell me that you want me to die and that you've been chasing me your whole life. And now I found you. And it's like, you just want some accolades in your life and you chose the wrong profession. Yeah, it's, it's called, um, it's called a, uh, a, not good girl fetish. It's called like a, um, uh, like a, an attaboy or like a pat on the head type thing. Like a, um, kudos, not Props. a kudos fetish. No, like like a, an enjoy... affirmation fetish. <clears throat> yeah. That's what Can it's... we just enjoy? Let's call that a kudos fetish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes me laugh so Everybody much. Everybody wants a kudos fetish. Okay, so as as Kate's gotten older, she's like, can you put the butt plug out of my butt? Well, you know, it's just like, I think there's, it becomes, so then I realized that if you watch too much pornography, then you're a, you're viewing yourself while you're having sex. You're like objectifying the girl kind of. And that's just part of the whole thing. So then I was like, all right, let's just uh, use the imagination. Well, and I've been really using the pornography to get to the imagination. Wait, were you using imagination with her? I mean, sorry, the porn. What? Like, were you both what? looking at porn together? Oh, no. So you were like, I'll watch porn and then that will bring it into my sex life. And now you're like, actually, I think imagination is better because now I'm I'm transposing a different yeah, person. Be, onto her. Because you're when you're watching porn, you're it's also a thing where it's like how long you watch porn. Like just because my whole thing was. And I just I, I thought pornography like video pornography was the I also got some in Salt Lake City. I got some magazines. So I tried to get into that. That was really interesting. That's awesome. That's a really interesting That's retro feel yeah. to it all. Really? Is that what you do? Yeah, it takes a lot I'll, of brain I power. I just look at an image or like I'll take an image from something. I was watching like Ben Shapiro last night and he's so disgusting. And then I was imagining I had him. I reduced it the way that he was talking by 0.75. And it was like still so rapid. And I was imagining him just like pleading and begging for sex and me being like you're disgusting but okay and i just just because i was listening and to that's you mass you masturbate yeah, yeah totally i can just take in things and make them into a scenario but porn i think is this, really really bad just porn that, is really bad well, <clears throat> that just that is one of the most confusing and i'll even say cryptic sexual examples i've ever heard in my entire life yeah. dude give me anything and i'll make it into a porn thing dentist <sighs> i got a dentist one that goes in there <sighs> Puts you under, does crazy things to you. <laughs> okay, that's a different anything type Tony of thing. Soprano, a lot of yeah. Soprano, whatever. Oh yes, a massively well, so abusive you're, you're, murderer. You are. Uh, you're using your magic. Oh, that's why you asked. You're using your imagination with the media. Right, but I'm alone, and I'll die alone. I'll always be alone. So sure, when right. I'm jerking off, tell I'm them not those tips. I'm not fucking what? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm not bringing that into sex when i'm having sex with somebody i'm like very much with them i'm not imagine i'm not like transposing anything yeah no i don't i've never had sex with anybody and like thought about the actual pornography and actually yeah. back to occupational hazard what i would do is <clears throat> i watch porn and then kind of put the person i'm with in it mm. so it's like it's in it and it's got to be you can't see the guy's face really that doesn't do anything you <laughs> I like it does a lot hey that's being Ian and uh Ian Ian and Sam I thought it was Jordan. an occupational no, hazard. Never. you're away from somebody so much and you're on the road yeah you just that's pornography is part of the thing but then just recently I've been kind of been being like what what was this use of time yeah 
Exactly. Why do you I'm have like, to watch pornography? What? Why can't you just jerk because, off? Because because you have to activate your penis to get yeah. hard what, to jerk off. Why don't off? you just jerk off when you get hard? I don't. I'm not. What I'm not a young about? kid anymore. I'm not just hey, getting just hard throughout the day. Wait, but what are you talking so, wait, about, lady? Shut up. Do you get horny without getting hard? I could get horny without getting hard, but I, I can't get hard I, without I, getting horny. And yeah, the porn helps me get horny. Can horn you, the... if you're horny, if you're like horny, I'm going to watch porn, or are you like, I'm bored, so I'll watch porn to get horny? It's to both. Do yeah. It's both. And we can do a thing that women can't do, which is we can have an orgasm in like four minutes. Yeah. Or less. I, mean, I can yeah, do that really... if I have Shapiro or something fucked up in there. Some nasty ass. Jesus. Some nasty so boy. It's like the just the gross guys. Yeah. Why? Because her head is full of spiders. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Who knew? Yeah. Um, but I okay, so now I understand more what you're saying, but it's not religious. You aren't like God's looking not down anymore. on me. When I was younger, I had to fight through that for so long. I used to masturbate and pray to my dead relatives asking for forgiveness while I was masturbating because I thought that they were, because everyone told Watching me. Watching down on you and Catholicism. Yeah, and, that's and like thing. judging me and Little do you know, me. dead people's porn, us masturbating, full circle. I mean, now that's with Jordan. Being Jor with Jordan. Being Jordan with, <laughs> with Ian. Yeah. That's so you should switch this. For like a special episode or something or for a week and have it be in Jordan with Ian. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Oh, that right? would me just be sitting with a guest being like, so what do you feel about the philosopher Descartes versus Nietzsche and Ian going like this? <laughs> that would be the whole episode. Well, if we want to skip back to that, Sam Harris says, yes. oh, there's no free will. Yes. And from my perspective, it's like, what's the point of talking about that? Which is, you think kind of, it's like, you Very do have true. free will and you don't, you're never going to know if you don't. The only right. thing it does is make you feel more impotent. And there's plenty of that in human beings' no, no, lives yeah. anyway. It also makes you feel less regretful. If what? Because it Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Last but night when I was having the panic attack, I was like, there's no way that I could have changed the trajectory to get it that right now I wasn't feeling this bad. And I disagree and with that. that. me down. And I disagree with that because... That I know we're joking, but now it's happening and it's making me mad. Okay, well, we already had a whole episode about how you don't agree with free will, so it doesn't go in. No, so I agree. There is free will. You say there's not. Okay. And what if that was the only, it was just a miscommunication, and so both of you are like, like oh, oh, you do? And you, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, anyway. No, I, I, I agree with that, that sometimes you, I look back and there's certain things that I would start to be like, I regret this. It was the worst decision I ever made. I should have not talked to that person. I shouldn't have been nice to that person. This person was a wounded bird and I tried to lift her up. Mm -hmm. But that kind of regret is sort of useless. And so in those cases, I say, well, that's what ended up happening almost with my free will. Because I made this decision. I was going to make that decision anyway. But I am an ethical relativist because I'm a Nietzschean. And so... That ethical relativism, when I first started studying ethics in the first book that I ever looked at, the in the opening chapter, opening probably paragraph, they're like, now they're absolutists and they're relativists. And there's no reason to even talk about relativism because if everything just depends and is subjective, then there's no reason for us to have this book, basically. So like all ethics are absolute. So there's an absolute good and absolute bad. I disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that all over the, if you just look at different time periods, mm -hmm. we can be like, well, murder was wrong. And then you go back 400 years and it was like the best thing you could do is kill someone. Yeah. But that's why the free problem. will thing is real because it's being like, okay, if I was, so say this guy who stabbed somebody and I'm like, that's bad. But if you lived every day in his life, if you had the same like trauma and the same, all oh this stuff God. and he stabbed somebody, then there's so, no such thing as good or so bad. Kate and I have had this argument about certain like there was a brother, my ex-wife had a brother and he like wouldn't talk to me. He's such an asshole, such a fucking piece of shit. And, but, and I'm telling you, he's a fucking piece of shit. He snapped at me once. Oh, dude. I, I was, in, I, was I, he asked me because I'm a celebrity to be a groomsman in his wedding. I didn't know him from Adam at all. And I was like trying to talk to a buddy of his to figure it out. And he was like, Hey, TJ. 
And I was like, I'm going to fucking Whoa. kill this guy. And if his ex-wife wasn't, or if my ex-wife wasn't his brother, I would have probably decked him, dude. I mean, I, Bro. Yeah. and I don't, I won't really ever fight people. I don't, I think physical violence is weird. Cause you I'm, didn't have to deck him. You could have gripped him up. I could have crushed him verbally, which is what I do for a living. Could have verbally eviscerated him as people like to say about me. Annihilate. Yep. Do you eviscerate? I can make, I've made women and men cry. As they're, I really as want you to tell the story the about the kid with the, the what the kids that you beat up outside the car. Oh yeah, that's a good. It's a really good story. So uh, he snapped me. I couldn't believe it, but I would always come to his defense and say, "Look at," because she would always go like this. She would go, "It's my ex-wife." She would go, um, "You have an ex-wife." She would go, "It's not possibly the way that I talk about my current relationship without having it, you know, come back around." Okay. So I, I sort of, I, I sort of in this case, I was like, I was like, look, if you had all of the, just basically what you said, if you was in his position, when your parents got divorced, if you had all those traumas, right? Uh -huh. Kids would beat you up when you're right. in, all that stuff. Cause she would go, well, if I was him, I would never do that. I can't believe you would do that. I would never do that. And I'm like, I know you would never do that. But if you were him, that's exactly what you'd do. And she's like, no, I wouldn't treat people like that. I'm like, but if you were him, you would. She's like, no, I wouldn't. So that's that circular argument. So you are but no I free will guy. I agree with you. I, so you're I agree a no with you. free will guy. It's both. It, I, I do believe that there, there is both because the subconscious in your past does influence your current. And then once you become aware of that, you can then use free will to decide what to do. Well, how about this? You can only. I mean, this is still. I haven't mocked you once today. Yeah. It's very nice of you. Everything I say, I know, mock. but I'm not mocking. Stoic, I'm just mirroring. Or do you know about Stoic philosophy? Yeah, yeah. So, Stoic what do you know about it? Explain, tell me what Stoic philosophy is. Stoic philosophy is a group of philosophers that was like, you know, like Epicurus is one of them, where it's basically like, it's like, uh, who's the famous one? Euralis. Ure Marcus, Marcus Euralis. Euralis. Ooh, that's his handbook. The Amber's handbook is like my Bible. So far, you're just naming people. What is Stoic? Stoic philosophy, philosophy is a group of philosophers that have that have practices on how to live a life devoid of suffering. It is usually built around uh, ways of living their life in a peaceful manner to avoid conflict and how to do such things. They all have different theories. Epicurus basically thinks that you should tend to garden and have friends over. You really need cheese. Yeah, see, she does the whole thing. And so, I like that. Yeah, cheese is great. And friends so, over. Cheese. Food. Cheese. Was that a good description? It was great. Okay. And Marcus, so, so but what, what she's talking about, which is right, is that they were like, all right, how do I live the best life? Part of that is not getting upset about what other people do, what they do to yeah. me. Um, things that are of nature, that this is the way life was going to work out one way or another. If there's a flood, if someone kills your mother, all of those things. It's like radical can, acceptance. <clears throat> totally. Which yeah. is something that my, um, we call him a mindfulness uh, therapist, mm -hmm. uh, but he's a substance abuse counselor. <laughs> so, uh, but so, so what I think is really funny is. That's that a huge part of getting sober is, you can is kind acceptance of do both. Yeah, is the radical, answer to all my problems today. But we're. You so what you're talking about, what they would talk about, is sort of both. So it's like you don't have free will to a certain extent because all these things happen to you and you can't do anything about them, mm -hmm. right? So even if you don't want, you can use all of your free will, but if SD decides you're not going to work for six months, then yeah, you're not going to work for right. six months. You do have free will to decide that doesn't affect me, and that's what I've been trying yeah. to say. You you don't have the Things happen. Listen, and I understand what you're saying. I do yeah. understand that. And what you have to get is, and I, and that is how we live. We live being like, I accept that all of these things came together. That's intellectualizing reality, right? All of these things came together. It's out of my control. I can only do what I can. But the actual, the Choice. actual, actual reality is that you were brought to the moment of accepting that without your consent like I you would disagree oh, okay I don't think so because here's why and and you saying people I don't think will so, kill you us agree You're, with here's me. what I think is here's why okay. it's bad I mean there's a God has a plan for me all that stuff and it's a mystery it's a mystery why my kid got <laughs> hit by a car yeah 
but God works in mysterious ways. Here's mm-hmm. how he works. So not I at fucking all. heard my whole not life. Not at all. Yeah, there's no determinism. We don't. So, but then yeah, that's a weird one. Okay, listen to me. Uchi-kuchi. I love you. Uchi-kuchi. Okay, listen, listen. Uh oh. Looks like we found a logical fallacy, folks, and that's Find it. it for Find being it. Jordan. With Ian Finance. G- give me a DJ Miller. I've never, give been me. Pr- I've never been paid in a proton pack, but that's what I'm going to take deserve instead it. of an Uber reimbursement. You deserve it. Speaking of Uber, what is his name? There Travis? is no fallacy. What all I am saying is that when you get to the point where you understand free will, you did not get yourself to that you point. It's an amalgamation. Caught. You said there's no determinism, but you're saying everything is determined by what? By you? By the circumstances around you? That's the same as no, God. No, determinism. If God is deciding how every single thing is going to go. I'm telling you, determinism is basically saying, I know how your life will end up and it'll go in one winding road, right? Yeah, it'll end up one that thing. That means there's no free will. I'm saying that you do not know where it will go, but it is determined by your subconscious God. and not God. But your subconscious was built how? By, by the experience circumstances around circumstance. you, mm-hmm. which all happened the way they happened. And so you have no choice in those experiences and they lead to having no choice every day. So you are deterministic. And oh, you deterministic don't in means that there's a determined outlook. That, the same that way. I know that by of course the there end. Is. You don't have any free will. It's headed to one point. No, but you don't know the point. The point is not known. Determinism is God has mapped this out. You will end up at the end of the episode throwing the turtle at the wall, whatever. And then, but free will is you do not know what will happen because all of these circumstances are coming and going. Everybody else is in no, flux. Yeah, this is semantics. I mean, it's not now semantics. She's, now she's hiding in the words. Thank you. And you know what? And I don't welcome. blame you because this is what was determined. Yes. Throw the and this is exactly what it's like being Ian. Oh yeah, you're being right. Ian dealing with fucking Jordan. That's the new name of the I show. I mean, you both are simply wrong, and and, and now, that's okay. And now the liquid death story. Yes. So, I early on had a very strange friend who said to me, "This liquid death thing." And I knew what it was. He goes, "If you want to invest in it." Early, early on, I can hook you up with the guy who invented it. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> and so. You love hanging with people that invent things. I did a Zoom. It's true. Uber. I'm friends with the Winklevoss. Liquid Dead. And we're good friends with the Winklevoss. No, trends. you're not. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I ended up at a crypto bar recently. <laughs> it's actually the never a time. The Winklevoss so this, has created Facebook. Oh. Yeah, it's got stolen. Wait, the twins? Them. Yeah, but now yeah. they're they, they got in on Bitcoin when it was like 200 bucks. They're Bitcoin billionaires. So are this, you? What? Are you a Bitcoin? I don't talk it, about net worth in basements. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ethan, you were supposed to be on your phone for that one. <laughs> uh, so, so I was like, okay. So I met with this guy and he was cool. He was like super like uh, LBC. He was very, you would like him. He was sublime. Oh, you know? and, did I make a mistake there? Oh, I yeah. Know. I don't listen to music. Hanging out in the um, LBC. So, I wonder if he practiced Santeria. So, <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, <laughs> uh, so I, I met with him and he was like, I was like, I'd like to be a brand ambassador. And he was like, well, I can't pay you, but I can sort of double your shares. So we recently did a thing where if you put in, this guy put in $75,000, we gave him $150,000 worth of shares. I was like, hmm, okay, I don't know that I have that money available right now, but that's the deal. Okay. And then, um, yeah, okay, it's there. So then I went to CAA, my agency, and I talked to my, like, endorsement deal guy, and he's a big, I said, look, there's this this water, it's liquid death, I believe in it because of the aluminum, I think it could be the future. It's got a stupid name. It's got the dumbest name of all time. But I kind of, murder your thirst. But I was like, I don't know. I kind of believe it. And he goes, I wouldn't do it. The water space is very crowded right now. <laughs> and he goes, and there's box water. That's yeah, stupid. The thing. water that's, space so that, is so that's crowded. What he's, saying. he's like water space. And you know what? If you do that, you're basically paying yourself to be a brand ambassador. It's like, so if you're going to pay yourself to do something. And what year was this? This was, I mean, this was when, where was I? I feel like I was in Los Angeles. But this was a while ago. Yeah. It was like four or five years ago, course, right? Yeah. Cut to Live Nation making an overall deal with Liquid Death. It absolutely exploding to the point where it found itself into a Brooklyn basement. Your the Delaware Den, if you tied will. up in a Brooklyn basement. Do you want to hear my the, story about Liquid Death? The so Delaware I Den. I probably could be a water multi multi millionaire. The only good thing about it is 
that same agent knew Henry Ford's grandson, and I was able to get my father a supercar, the Ford 2017 Ford GT. Love it. Oh, something, that's cool. That's a something car. that the only thing that my father couldn't do for himself would be getting that car, but I got it for him. And it's like, what's more important? Money? Yeah. Or this thing with your father. That yes. thing's forever. more important than father a Ford thing. GT. The father thing I think is really, really the important. The father thing. And I think sometimes I just people in my you. life would disagree. Because if I had liquid death money, then it would have been, yeah, I probably would make it such that I didn't have to work as much. But if I didn't have to work as much, then I wouldn't be as good of a comic. Yeah. So I guess this all ended up being determined. Free will to choose what you chose. I choose determinism. And can I say... It goes against the wall. I thought that might have been a good way to end the. Yeah, that's a good way to yeah, end. Yeah, that's a good way to end. Not saying we should end it now, but I was saying I oh, kind of. No. I had that joke in the chamber and I was going to. You wait did? On you it. had it? Okay, good. Wait, wh- yeah. We can just cut it out. No, keep yeah, it. Yeah. Keep it. Keep and it. then people see that it's real down here. Yes. We're being real. I have it's not about eat. the editing. Oh, okay. Yeah. TJ, plug it up. I thought suddenly you were like, no, I plug it. We got to plug right it up. Now. Don't get plug up and my leave. my pussy up. I Jesus. I, I don't know TJ, what... plug up my he urethra. Can't because of Kate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my podcast is cashing in with TJ Miller. Um, uh, TJ Miller does not have a website.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please watch my special, Dear Jonah, which is absolutely beautiful. It's a love letter to this guy, Jonah, that heckled me. And I thought, okay, you know, this is just drunk. It's the perfect audience. I started talking to him. He was not drunk, he was special. Needs developmentally challenged. I found out I just went back to Nashville. So throughout the show, I talk with him, interact with him. He ends up having the funniest line. He's he and I do the closer together. It's just like so amazing. So like seventy percent of it is improvised. The rest is pandemic related material. Um, again, subscribe to YouTube. You can also see the Spokane special, which is about thirty or so minutes of improvised uh, material on Spokane, Washington. So if Hell you've yeah. never been there oh, and you don't great. live there. Uh, a lot of the references will be lost on you, but that's why it's so fucking funny. Uh, I have my own peanut butter and hot sauce. That'll be higher up in the description. Uh, the hot sauce is TJ's choice. Please go and support uh, all this available on amazon.com, but support the hot sauce right now because the maker of the hot sauce and my collaborator, Doug Linz died about two weeks ago. And oh, so God. all the profits from the hot sauce on Amazon are going right back to pay for his funeral. And I have my own peanut butter. I need this. I love peanut butter. She, she asked why my spoons have peanut butter on them because I eat it all the time. It's so delicious. It's uh, the best. It's called T P B and J Peanut Better. Hey, T- we're, hey, we're having a good time. T P B and J. Having a great time, Jordan. Peanut Better. You have barely thought about this personal trauma that happened last. Yeah. Night. We're just having a good yeah. time. Uh, we're having so much fun. Yeah. Uh, TPBJ oh, Peanut eye Butter. slides down my face. Three. <laughs> uh, she's a big eye coming out of your head. Yeah. She likes that type of humor. Yeah. There's two references I've heard today. One, my fir- one of my first interactions with TJ, if not the first, was him walking in and he was dressed in a Halloween outfit and he had a little rubber ducky on his face. And I was intimidated because it was TJ. And I was like, yeah, I like your uh, uh, rubber ducky on your face coming out of your face. And I was like, this is small rubber ducky and you're like it's actually like a regular rubber ducky and i was like no that's like a mini it's a mini ducky and he and then at, at this point i'm expecting him to be like all right weirdo but instead he was like it's a regular size actually and i was like oh my god we're going <laughs> it's fun it's fun uh so there's three different peanut butter flavors somebody recently called them dessert peanut butter we have dark chocolate coconut <gasps> that's for the ladies yes. cherry chocolate with real dried cherries milk chocolate and honey roasted peanuts and then my favorite toffee crispy with <gasps> toffee milk chocolate and rice krispies I love toffee. and i have to tell you over and over again it's the best peanut butter that you'll ever have God is bless. there normal is no. there regular? Other people make that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, go to the other guy if you want. I make gourmet normal. peanut butter. That's yeah. what I do. All available on Amazon.com. Some guy at the end of a show or when, during my, my pitch, my peanut butter pitch, which I think is funny. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys do this, but sometimes I have like, not even meta jokes, but like I, the peanut butter and the hot sauce. And sometimes I'll be like, I want to be the Paul Newman 
of comedy. I want to get this stuff out there. I want people, I want to get out of comedy yeah. mm. and get into food stuff. Yeah. And so that's just, that entire idea is so funny to me. And I'm, so I'm pitching the peanut butter, which makes me laugh that I would stop a show and yeah. be like, let me tell you a little bit about my dessert peanut butter. Yeah. That's this so This is like crazy. when you pulled necklaces out at Skankfest and you're like, my mother makes these necklaces. Yeah, exactly. And she does. It. Yeah, and she does. And I, and I give them out to people that won the nose flute game show. Yeah. <laughs> so all that's out. And then you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, I had a crazy, oh, no, it was TJ said. Real life. TJ said. <laughs> yep. So I go, I'm finishing the peanut butter pitch and this guy who kind of, I think I had made fun of him before, but he's like, all this was to sell peanut butter? Or maybe you said food. <laughs> All this was to sell food? And I stopped and I was incensed. Really? I was so upset. I don't know why, but it just hit me in the wrong way. And I just paused and I go, no, all this is so that I can come to fucking Appleton, Wisconsin and have some idiot yell out yes. all this is and then i went off and i just zeroed in talked took yes. him apart yes with his haircut the way he looked yes. how he was gonna die alone even if he was with somebody yeah once you know and sometimes is when his wife somewhere? wakes up in the morning and uh and sees him she just goes i could do better i could have done better wait is yeah. this your friend joshua settled. What? No, yeah. Jonah? No, Jonah. No, no. Oh, I lifted him up. He's like okay. a swan. Okay. Okay? okay. This guy was some piece of shit, wannabe truck driver. Fuck him. Just Hate him. Loser. You're watching, yeah. buddy? Loser. Turn it off. But isn't that such a beautiful meta thing that he <laughs> thought it was about that? You thought it was about this, and then it became about that? It's a great thing. Yeah. I mean, it worked out yeah. for me. And I didn't sell him the peanut butter. Ha! Can't yeah. do it. And his wife wanted some dark chocolate coconuts. So again and again, you disappoint. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Jordan, Which what you got? Determined. What do you got? Shows. With plugs. Great. Oh, when will this come out? Two weeks. Um, all my uh tour dates are on my website. TJ Miller does not have a website.com. And I'm touring in perpetuity, you guys. I like touring. That's great. My next uh, tour, which starts next year, is called the... Actually, can I pitch this? Tell me what you guys think about this. The Crowd Sorcerer Tour. Because I'm crowdsourcing the material. I'm a crowd it sorcerer. sounds like you're crowdsourcing... The name. The money. No, wrong. It's crowd Sorcerer Tour. You got to wear a wizard costume. That's what it is. I'm a bit of a sorcerer when with it comes a, to With an material. orb. Crowdsource. Yes. Is that a comedic term to crowdsource? No, crowdsource means no, it's you, a, you go. You, it's a term in the world. No, that means, isn't crowdsource mean that you, oh, you crowdsource to find things out. Yes, never mind. Sorry, I'm thinking We're of crowdsourcing crowdfunding. The word. Yeah, yeah. Crowdsorcery. Yeah. It's not crowdfunding, though. What's that called? Crowdfunding is when you raise money up. Like from, a Kickstarter. Yes, like a but Kickstarter. Is it, no, crowdsourcing I know what it is, is like doing a poll to make a decision. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you crowdsource the work so you get multiple other people to do crowdsourcer what you should be doing. 2024. TJ Miller, the crowd sorcerer, 2024. All ends in ours. December 3rd, <laughs> I'm filming my first special, Wild, Happy, and Free at the yeah, Cutting Room. Yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah. That's great. At the Cutting Room. I yes. Cut, I December cut 3rd, ianfinance.com, two shows. Come on out. I love you. You're going to hear me talk about it a lot. And I appreciate it's your great. patience. Is with it that. self funded? Are you doing yeah. it? That's the fucking way, man. That's it's what I do with Dear Jonah. Sourced. I have two not more specials coming out. Oh my um, God. You're a fucking special doc machine. I'm liking it. But I filmed three specials in one year, two of them within three weeks of each other. What? The Philosophy Circus, which is philosophy, she'll like, and circus, which he'll like. Yes. That should be the name of the fucking yeah. show. That's your tagline Be it in with Jordan. Philosophy, philosophy Circus. circus. Yes. We had a podcast that went nowhere before called uh, Futon Philosophy. Where I love she that. explained philosophy and philosophers to me and another guy. Did you spell futon or philosophy with a PH or both? both. Or both, both with F? Right, futon with the PH. Yeah. But that kind of looks like futon. I used to call to f futons tofus. I love it. I used to call pho, you know, pho. I used to call that soup. Asian soup. That's what I would say. And but <laughs> and then the gentle I'll, giant. I'm gonna be in I'm gonna be in Utah, Burlington, Vermont, Rochester, Syracuse, Albany. Uh I'm adding more tour dates soon. Come out by 
Yeah, and also I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, Pittsburgh Improv, ianfidance.com for all the dates. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Patreon.com slash Pod. And get some goddamn peanut butter. Unless you're a dickhole. And- I'm sending, I'm gonna now that I have this ad yeah. pass, I'm sending you guys peanut butter and hot sauce. Dude, I love you're peanut love butter. It. I have a weak stomach for hot sauce, but I will gobble. Do the, do the peanut up. butter. You're gonna lose your mind. I yeah. might. I might send you two of each because you're going to finish one so quickly. Dude, you know, in the middle of the night, I wake up and I, I zombie walk to my cabinet. I scoop peanut butter in my mouth and I go to bed. Yeah. This is saying, amazing. I don't keep, I usually do not keep peanut butter in my house for the same reason. And I want to tell you this. That's what I do about guns. In my ride. <laughs> I'll wake up in the middle of the night and put a gun in my mouth. Uh, yeah, instead you put the peanut butter in the mouth. Uh, I have peanut butter uh, in my rider. No way. So I get everywhere I go, they have to have crunchy organic peanut butter for me. I get bananas for Cash Levy, Cashing with TJ Miller, the podcast available wherever podcasts are available. And um, and I would used to take the peanut butter home because I'm like, I'm not going to waste the peanut right. butter like you. I don't like to waste food. Yeah, yeah. And I had to stop doing it. And I was like, you guys, you know, finish this. I didn't, I'm, I'm not, but. I would bring it home and I, I would just I got to ask, what kind of peanut butter? Are you a Skippy or a Jiffy guy? As a child. Yes. <laughs> I did Skippy. Yes, you got to go Skippy. Jiff is for fucking Looney Tunes. Well, and Jiff was more of a creamy peanut butter. And I have a joke that doesn't seem to work ever. But people that... Eat only smooth peanut butter. Have you ever met these people? I don't think they're prepared for the challenges they're going to face in their life. Wow. Why are you eating creamy peanut butter? It's so bizarre. Creamy peanut butter is good. But now I do. Because it's like a rocky type thing and you're going to face rocky roads. I I had other opinions, but not after that winter. Thank you. See you next week. I don't want to hurt Ethan's mic, so I'll do this. I'm so glad Jordan is here. Yeah! Isn't that the best? We can finally have fun.